my name is Frank Cronin. Uh, currently, I write under FX Cronin for the National Catholic Register, the Catholic World Report, and Catholic Exchange, and I have a book out uh, with Sophia Institute Press called The World According to God. I went to Catholic schools. My family was nominally Catholic. Uh, by the time I left high school, I didn't have much of a faith. I mean, it was kind of more uh, a momentum, not anything personal. Uh, by the time I was 19, I pretty much figured out that uh, there wasn't a God and that there was nothing transcended in the universe whatsoever. So I was kind of a functional atheist most of the time. An occasional weekday, I'd be an agnostic. I'm not really sure about things. And I stayed that way till my mid-30s. I did interact with Christians. I, I looked at that as kind of like a sport. It was kind of fun because uh, for the most part, uh, the the Christians I encountered were Protestants trying to do their level best to evangelize me. But, um, you know, citing scripture made no sense. And I made sure that they knew that uh, unless you can make that make sense, we, we really don't have anything to talk about. And so um, I usually looked at it uh, as an opportunity for poking fun and messing around with them, taking advantage of the, the poor, dumb Christians. That's That was my thing. Uh, not always, not really always to be mean, but certainly to be playfully pointed with them. So they never really gave me any, anything that, that was even remotely persuasive. But uh, 10 days before I was to get married, my wife, Annie, uh, became a born again Christian. So um, it didn't open my eyes. It ripped the lids off and made me force forced me to at least consider it. And uh, I wasn't, I was a pretty hostile audience for, I want to say a year or two with that uh, often. And I was, even on our wedding day, I said, if this becomes an issue in our relationship, I'm out of here in six months. Because uh, uh, I understood that this would be a ground shift in who she was and potentially what our relationship was. So for me, um, I was forced, forced to, so, uh, indirectly, I guess, forced to uh, look at my conclusions about God. And so that that's when I started reconsidering that. And it took me about three years to figure out, okay, there's, there is a God and, and, and there's one God. So I became kind of a monotheist. Uh, and I stayed that way for another couple, three years till I worked out the Jesus question. I had the born again experience as a, as a Protestant in 1988. And I stayed there until 2007. Uh, I did get curious a uh, few years after being born again. Uh, people had told me that God could direct your life. And so I was very curious, what, what's that like? What does that even look like? How would you know that God's directing your life? And so that isn't one that you read many books about. That's one of those you live it out. And so lo and behold, I was back in graduate school uh, from getting my second master's, this one in divinity, at a Protestant a divinity school, Regent, Regent University in Virginia Beach. And so um, that became, and I was a contented Protestant. I wasn't a discontented one at all until I, uh, my secretary at work, who was a Catholic, and she used to always say to me, Frank, you're more Catholic than the Catholics. And, and I didn't know what that meant, but I knew she meant to as a compliment. So she asked me to read uh, Scott Hahn's book, Rome Sweet Home, uh, this, over summer vacation where I work and she wasn't going to be around. And so I did. And Scott Hahn's, uh, there's like four sentences in a paragraph in the middle of the book where he takes on the idea of sola scriptura without offering the Catholic alternative and just said, well, if if sola scriptura is your fundamental belief system and how we know truth about God and truth about the faith, wouldn't that have to be in Scripture? And nowhere do you find it in Scripture. Sola Scriptura is never part of Scripture. It's an outside presupposition laid upon Scripture, but it's not in Scripture. So that's a pretty, for me, that was, that was a devastatingly simple contradiction that allowed me to, to say, well, okay, so like if this whole thing is built on a contradiction, then there's something wrong. And then I got curious about the Catholic epistemology, uh, their theory of knowing, and but that caught my attention. And, and I was not a discontented Protestant, quite the opposite. 
then, then it was just a matter of doing the math on it. Okay, so like, what is there? And I, so I began to look at that. I began to see, uh, look at Catholic philosophy. You st I started looking at the, the history of the church from the beginning. Uh, it bore no resemblance to what the Protestants said it did. Uh, in, in some elements in the Protestant faith, there was this idea of restoring Christianity to its original conception. And when you go back, you see the Catholic Church. You don't see Protestantism. Uh, I mean, the scriptures weren't even, uh, the canon of scripture wasn't even established until the late 300s AD. So the Protestants, based on scripture alone, can only, can't get within 350 years of the beginning. So that was another significant thing in, in addition to those logical contradictions. So for me, uh, then it became a, a, a father-husband challenge of how do I bring my family into this? And so uh, that took another 10 months, but they eventually came too. So. <laughs>